Hey designers, in today's video, I'm putting two of the biggest 3D fashion design tools head to head. It's Claude 3D and Browseware V Stitcher. And we are modeling a classic puffer jacket. I'll show you the similarities and the key differences between the two. When it comes to patterns, sewing, adding volume and simulating. Let's dive in, Claude. I have my patterns imported directly in the 2D and 3D window, of course. And then I use the arrangement point to snap them around the avatar. You can also use the gizmo for manual adjustment. So I place them. So this jacket, this puffer has lining. So first I put the lining in, I put the sleeves. You just have to drag the patterns and then click on the areas you'd like to assign them. That's the sleeve cuff. In both programs, it's very important to place the patterns as close to the body as possible. This will help with simulation and trust me, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Unlike Claude 3D, the process is a little bit more manual. So if you select the patterns, you see you can move them into clusters, arranging clusters like here below. It is uh, a little bit more practical. It makes everything a little bit more neat and organized, but at the same time is almost the same version of the claw arrangement points. Claw is a little bit more intuitive for beginners, while browseware gives you a tighter control if you need that sewing in this teacher i have my pieces all sewn up the side and back to the front okay so here the situation is a little bit different you can just get you click stitch on top left and then you can use symmetry or not what you do on the left side to be done on the right side as well in terms of sewing and you just basically select the segment and then select the segments and they're going to be sewn the other option is multi-stitch that's when you have to sew different segments okay so from I'm going to select my segments. Let's say there are these two, and it's good to follow the arrows for direction here. That's from from. Then I'm going to go to two and just select the other two segments involved in sewing. And then once I'm done, I click done and it's basically done. That's how you create. This is a version of the um, free sewing, I would say, or M2N sewing from Claw 3. So in Claw, there's four types of sewing. There's the segment sewing, the free sewing, M2N sewing, and then free M2N sewing. Here I have used the free sewing. So click to start, click to end, and then you do the same on the other panel as well, the other segment, and then you click enter at the end. We are sewing the side seams and as you, as you can see, we'll view the sewing on both 2D windows and then you can check yourself in the 3D windows as well. Browseware gives a little bit more technical feedback in terms of sewing, but overall I like the sewing tools for both programs. Okay, so how do we actually create the puffing effect in Claude 3D? First, we add internal lines to our jacket. We create a design to our liking. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just do a very basic one. So I will use the internal line tools. Here is the fifth from the top. And then I'm just gonna start designing my internal lines. I'm gonna split that. I can make it as accurate as I want to. I'm going to Add all these internal lines to my jacket, to the sleeve, to the front, bottom, and actually even the hood part. So I have everything created here. I'm going to layer clone under. So I'll make a copy of this. And now we will play with the pressure. Pressure does everything to create the puffer effect. 
I'm going to remove link editing. I'm going to strengthen it. And then if I go at the top part, actually let's first to the bottom. I'm going to move the layer to zero. Okay, now on the top one, I'm going to go to pressure and I'm just going to move this to the maximum to 70. Then I will select all the patterns for the bottom layers and I'm going to put the pressure to minus seven zero. I'm going to make sure I remove the pressure from my zipper part. And now I'm just going to click simulate and you can see the effect of the puffing part. It's going to start happening. And there you go. I'm going to unfreeze. It's probably a little bit too puffed up, especially because I want to make it very similar to the one in browseware. So I can remove some of the pressure. Maybe I'll just put it to a lower amount for sure. And to make this more realistic, I can also add puckering to make those shadows and stitches of the lines stand out. So I select the internal lines here. and go to shearing and you'll see there is like this pink lines happening around the internal line so i'm going to do that for all of them and then of course click simulate again and there you go you can see some of the puffing of the stitches happening around the internal lines and I think it looks pretty good but it's way too puffed up and here I'm just going to basically play with it and reduce some of the pressure so I can make it more real. In browser, how do we create the puffing effect? First, we create the internal lines the same as we did in Claw. We have to create our design and the same. For the purpose of this tutorial, the design of the internal line is very, very basic. Once these internal lines are created and placed on the whole garment, on the sleeves, front and back, and even on the hood part, we are going to materials. We choose the fabric and then from, you go to fabric physics. And this is where it gets much more technical in browser than claw. You can select the thickness and here's at 50 millimeter. As you can see that in the chart here, you can choose the thickness of your garment and this is what you would basically send to production. The thickness is basically the thickness of the white fill inside of the jacket and then you have to make sure you have puffiness puffy firmness firmness selected here and you see mine is more soft it's at one this is how you dictate the puff and the thickness of the outer layer to make it more compact dress and finish and there you go no makes puffing a little bit more visual and immediate Browseware definitely has a more technical approach and it takes a few more steps. Simulation in Browseware is a little bit more tedious than in Claw 3D. Claw is focused more on the animation, the aesthetics part. Browseware is more for technical designers and making sure everything is extremely accurate. On the left side, there's this snapshot. So you can re-upload the snapshots of your garment, of your final garment. You can also create different variations. Maybe you want to create it sleeveless. Maybe you want to edit some details. You can save them in these snapshots and you don't have to create a new garment for it. It's just a variation. And once you are done with the rendering and simulation of it, you can just save it here to quickly upload it once you open the program. And now I'm going to go in prepare mode. And this is where we were, the point we were at when we added everything in clusters. 
Okay, so I have everything arranged and then I am going to click dress. And if you see here, I have everything arranged and clustered, grouped together basically. Okay, as you see, the simulation really takes a while here. And you have to wait until it finishes. So who wins? Honestly, it depends. Chloe is more visual and easier to pick up. Great for designers focus on aesthetics and animation. Browser, on the other hand, is perfect for production teams who need precise control, detailed fabric properties, and pipeline into manufacturing. Let me know in the comments below which one do you prefer. If you want to download the 3D Puffer in Cloud3D or Browseware, check the download files below. And if you want to see more fashion breakdowns, hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one. Claw makes puffing a little bit more visual and immediate. Browseware definitely has a more technical approach and it takes a few more steps.